Are you a psychic, sensitive, or seeker who wants to learn more? Welcome to the Mystic School with Sarah Wiseman, where we dive deep into all things mystic and metaphysical. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mystic School. I'm Sarah Wiseman, and today we are talking about this idea of the mystic listens. The mystic receives divine messages from ascended masters, guides and angels, the departed, animals, nature. I'm going to add some other <laughs> other conscious beings in there, all of the cosmic conscious spirit world. And we're going to kind of break this down and what it what it means to actually be listening to the universe and why it's a little bit different than what you might think. Today is also free readings Tuesday. So feel free to call in for your free reading at 888-298-5569-888-298-5569. And uh, I wanted to let you guys know, so we are just early in August, and for those of you who um, haven't found it yet, my Divine Astrology channeled forecast for August just came out, and you'll find that at sarahweisman.com. And I've also added a free, free mini course. We used to have a free ebook, but I decided that people were so interested in some of these techniques that I've been teaching, and it just felt good to provide a way for you guys to get a way to do that, to see what you think about the training, what you think about uh, doing this as self-study. So if you go to the website, sarahweisman.com, there's a free mini course called The Magic of Blind Readings, which we may hopefully even talk about today a little bit. And then, um, Last, we are actively registering for fall semester 2022, which begins uh, in next week. And so, or excuse me, it begins in a few weeks. So if you'd like to study directly with me um, and be in this group of just like amazing people, you know, some are beginners, some are masters, and we all just work together and we work on this practice of spiritual intuition so if you're interested in that go to the website and there's a place called training sarahweisman.com and again free readings tuesday 888-298-5569 so what i want to talk about today is this idea of the mystic listens and a couple of things are my examples um, first for those of you um, who have ever dived into the really, really old, early James Bond movies. Now, yes, there's a lot of issues with misogyny and some old ideas. So we're just going to accept that. It was supposed to be funny at the time. It's not funny now. But um, what's interesting about the way they portray James Bond early on is in the midst of all chaos, he always makes the appropriate response. He always makes the immediate, instantaneous, um, gut level, intuitive response without even hesitating. So all the stuff is going on, you know, there's bad guys over here and, and this is happening and that's happening and he's playing a game of at the casino or he's driving a car or, and always at the at the very last minute when you just think you know look out james he makes the correct decision and so what this is about to me is that he you know not really him but this character this spy character that is being portrayed has learned this secret of paying attention to everything and being able to sense when the important thing arrives being able to sense and this is also about this idea of the mystic listens we are continually bombarded by so much information and i would say you know if you if you bring what's coming in on our our phones and our screens 
we may have even more information than you know an old-fashioned spy had at the time um, but it's our ability to tune in to know what's the most important to pay attention to and just get rid of all the distraction so one way of course to do this is to really pare down and simplify your life so you're not as bombarded by distractions so this might be distractions in your schedule this might be distractions in in drama in relationships or drama at work this might be in distractions from the drama in your own head that's continually <laughs> telling you uh, all this stuff that isn't important um, so one one way is to just get rid of the extra the other way because sometimes that isn't possible. Sometimes we're in a very activated time in our lives when everything's hitting us all at once. And so sometimes we just have to have that ability to look at the whole thing all at once and sense the piece that is important and spot it immediately. Um, right before doing the show today, I was out at this uh, nature preserve near where I live in Oregon. And um, I saw something flying over the river, just like a flash in my eye. And then as I looked, I followed it and, and this gigantic bird came right to the tree, pretty darn close, maybe, I don't know, 50 feet away. And there it was like a young eagle. And so in all that was going on in this nature preserve, the trees rustling, there was a river flowing, there were people biking and walking, and then this little flash, and I knew that's the thing, that's the thing to pay attention to. And then, and then the eagle comes, this young eagle right there to be viewed. So allowing yourself to have everything going on, and then just that noticing, that listening. So we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. We um, have a caller, so I want to go to the phones real quick. We're going to keep this discussion going. Uh, we have Jack from San Diego. Jack, welcome to the program. Hi, Sarah. It's very good to be with you today. Yes, thank you. What can I help you out with today? Um, well, I have a, a son. Uh, he's 26, and he's been diagnosed recently with a very serious mental illness. Um, prior to that, he's a professional. He's an engineer. For the past four years very successful very kind of high pressure but he had like a psychic break or a psychotic break rather um and uh he, he's in treatment he's getting better but i didn't know if you could perhaps uh, give a little insight on on how that will uh carry forth um i love him dearly he's my only child and uh and i'm just i'm trying to give him all the the love and healing that that he deserves so yeah, absolutely. Maybe chime in on that. Yeah, well, um, do you know uh, what what the the drug the drug or alcohol the substance use was? Do you know or anything about that? If he had that, his own. I know he was drinking. Um, I don't know about the drugs. I I know he smoked a little marijuana, but I I don't know anything about like illicit drugs or other. Hard yeah. Drug. yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure if he's in treatment, they're going to get to the bottom of it. But um, there's a lot around uh, marijuana. You know, obviously it's legal now, so that's that's a different thing. But uh, the potency kind of can create a, a psychotic like uh, effects in people if they're overusing or using too much, or if they're just sensitive to it. So I'm feeling like a little bit of it is around substance use um, and I'm, I'm searching and searching for past trauma like abuse or something like that but I'm not necessarily finding that at the normal level that I would expect to see with something like this so it feels very hopeful for him but it's going to take time and for mm -hmm. you in your position to understand that there's going to be um, relapses in his recovery 
in his um, in his spiritual and in his psychological recovery. So knowing that it's a longer journey to a new stability, not the same person that you used to know, um, but, a, but a yeah, but a person who's um, actually coming out much more transparent, much more open really shying away from a lot of the pressures he put himself under um yes yeah so um and and so he's he's had this break in part because he needs some treatment but also because he's having a full identity shift or he's losing his past identity and so it's a journey to come out of this right um, right what about for you in terms of you're losing your identity too of your being the parent to this person that was more fitting in the normative realm or the so called success and um, that's a change for you too, how are you feeling about that. I, I think I, I'm coming to terms with it. Uh... As long as I have my wonderful son to to love and and to help to heal, uh, if, if he's open to me uh, helping him, as long as he's in my life, and uh, you know that's that's all <laughs> that's all yeah. I really care. I, I don't I'm, I'm not over bound by success or you know image or, or or anything like that as long as we're a loving family and we're closely connected we've always been very close i think mm -hmm. and uh yeah. yeah i just i just hope hope we stay close and and loving and and keep healing uh you know throughout I, our lives i think you're gonna get closer and you do, do mm -hmm. you guys live near each other at all right now or is it fairly far away well yeah he's he's living with me okay good right now yes yeah, so so um, the living situation will not be exactly as it is now, but I would expect that this closeness and this transparency, I would expect there to be a lot of revelations of things that you didn't even know about. Just this right. continued revelation, discovery, transparent. You're like, what? I had no idea. Why didn't you tell me? Um, right. Right. And then and then the living situation, like he doesn't always have to live with you as he gets better in this sort of sure. wave of recovery. Um, he may, mm -hmm. you know, live nearby, um, but right. he, he gets back on his feet again. So it's actually, you know, it's kind of even though it's it's incredibly difficult, it's also really beautiful how you are going to open up to each other. It's almost like maybe that's part of what he didn't allow himself before. He just pushed everyone away. So, yeah. Well, um, and do you have um, therapy or something for yourself? Because that would be really useful. Um, I'm trained in Reiki. Um, mm -hmm. I meditate. I, I'm very interested in spirit. I always have been. Um, so is my wife. And and uh, I think we're very uh, close in, in that sense. Uh, and we're looking at a family counseling that involves our son. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just, I try to go within and, and seek the answers. And then if I can't do it on my own, I, I, I ask loved ones or friends or pray or, yeah. you know, or whatever I need to do to, to, to well, get don't, the answers. Yeah, don't shun if he's put into, say, um, AA or substance abuse groups like go go there you know don't it doesn't all have to be spiritual there's a lot in mainstream addiction sure. recovery and so and just um identity recovery not recovery that's not the right word but shifting of identity just um don't shun the mainstream because there may be some answers there too to kind of get everything out in the open so yeah. Well, Jack, sure. I wish you the best and it, it is, it is going to be okay. It's just going to have some, some, take some time. So it's going to just take a little time. I, yeah. I truly appreciate your input, Sarah, and, and much peace and blessings to you. Ah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Okay. Sure. Take care. Yeah. 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 That, um, that's a really hard thing when somebody that is on the road to adulthood 
and then sort of there's this snap or break and as the parent we think oh you know they're doing fine they're on their own and then they're not um, and then we got to regroup and show up and assist and it's not always parents it could also be a, an adult child taking care of an older person who has this kind of uh, break or you know dementia or alzheimer's or some kind of thing that happens or somebody that's in an accident like we're always called even when we least expect it to be the caretakers for each other and for others to be the caretakers for us and this idea of doing things without judgment without there needing to be one way or another that things happen with full transparency so if somebody was going to have you know a, a substance issue or if they were having something they needed to be revealed like their identity or something that had happened in the past such as a trauma um we got to be there fully you know the more divine light we shine on anything the more the darkness dissipates so letting go of moral judgments or how we think things should be and just being with how things are and doing the best we can we are um, having free readings Tuesday, 888-298-5569. I wanna talk a little bit more about the mystic listens and how, we, like Jack, the caller before, you know, this idea of going in and receiving guidance from divine beings of other realms. And these are ascended masters guides and angels and the departed so we can go in meditation and it's not like the orville where you know you have the other the other extraterrestrial races like beaming over it, it doesn't happen that way you know we're just simply crossing a veil of perception or crossing a veil of dimensionality when we go into meditative space and we are going up and the ascended divine being is coming down to reach us. So it's sort of like um, we're not on the same vibrational level and yet we can lift our vibration up slightly through relaxation, through this gentle trance state that we go into through eyes closed and through our intention of seeking guidance. And you know, this is, somewhat similar to how people pray it's just with a little bit different intentionality and when people pray they want to pray to god or um, a particular de deity um, mary and so forth when when we are doing this meditative style we open ourselves and we go up levels of dimensionality and again we go up levels by relaxing we go up levels by letting our mind chatter and our egoic thought and our need to have anything be any particular, <laughs> any particular way. And we're just like, you know, I know nothing. Please, please inform me. I'm open and available to whatever comes in. And then this gives these beings a chance to these entities, these consciousness forms. Um, the ability to come in and to guide us. Now, some people don't believe in these guides and angels and the departed and so forth. And I think that's fine. If you don't believe in it, you know, just wait along to, <laughs> until you do. Um, uh, I was looking at some kind of meme. It says, if you don't believe in reincarnation, you will next lifetime. <laughs> So uh, just this idea of um, those of you who have had experiences and had who do believe know that it's irrefutable what happens when we're communicating in the spirit world. Um, it's not random. It's not coincidental. It's not just one of those things. We don't just make it up. Um, we have actually the ability to communicate with entities at a different dimensional level. And why wouldn't we? The universe is a gigantic place. 
we are not the only dimension. We are not the only planet. We are certainly not um, the beings that are in charge of everything, right? We're just so tiny. And so this idea of many lifetimes happening at once, many dimensionalities, many awarenesses or consciousness, many beings inhabiting um, you know, the same space all at one time. And how do we just cross that perceived veil to do that? So we can do that in meditation. And then this other idea of other things bringing us messages, such as animals, discuss the eagle that I saw earlier. Um, at the time of noticing that eagle, the young eagle, um, I have a lot of change going on in my life at the moment. And I was just like, what is this all about? Like, everything seems to be, for a lot of you, not just me, everything seems to be sort of becoming different very quickly or falling away or being unable to catch my grounding exactly in the old way. A lot of this is happening, not just me, to, to lots of us. Everything seems to be kind of shifting underfoot. And this seeing of this young eagle, this gigantic, this magnificent, young, fresh bird, it's like, yes, of course we are ready to start something new. Of course, the cycle of ending and newness is always here with us, this wave of building and receding or creating and, and releasing. Um, so this was just a, a totem animal sighting that gave me this idea of being fresh and new and young and starting again. And this is the natural realm of how things are. And then nature is always communicating with us. Um, yesterday, you know, it's been so hot here in Seattle, Portland. Yesterday out, the clouds started to look weird. And then it just started to rain out of nowhere for a little while. And once again, not that I caused the rain in the neighborhood, but um, once again, I had been sitting musing on all the things that were taking place. And it's just like the rain came and of course, magnificent, wonderful rainbow. So as you'll notice that some of these things, animals, nature, they don't really speak in language, right? They don't, they don't give us the words flying on a plane in front of our house, you know, everything will be okay. Uh, but they give us something without words that is non-language based. They get us, give us an emotional knowing. So sometimes the universe answers us in that way. Other times with some of the ascended masters, guides and angels, and even the departed, you will start to see in your mind's eye visions of things happening. You will start to see a little movie in your third, third eye, which um, may show you the being in some kind of outfit, possibly maybe the being holding some kind of object that has some kind of significant meaning that you understand the being using telepathy to provide, again, not language, but the understanding coming into your mind's eye or coming into your mind's ear, or coming into your self as knowing. And again, this idea happens when we stop pretending that we know the answer egoically from our mind ego personality of course we don't we don't know the answer the answer is bigger than linear thought can provide and so when we go into this other dimensionality of relaxation letting go of the need to control letting go of the need to have anything be a certain way allowing what is so like what is what is happening now what is unfolding now becoming aware of it and then just letting the other influences that the universe is continually providing to us to come in and inform us remembering again back to 
this idea that we started talking about at the beginning of the show about the old, old, old James Bond movies with all their problems, you know, I'm aware. <laughs> it was a whole different time. And, and um, so erasing that part and just being aware of in chaos, which is the world, in chaos, in every distraction, we simply relax and pay attention to what is actually happening. What is actually happening? What is the eagle flying by and noticing that? What is the clouds looking weird and it starting to rain? What is just having this knowing out of nowhere in the midst of chaos, all the things we think we want. So um, I know that we want a lot, right? And there's good reasons we want things. We want people to be healed. We want everyone to be safe. We want to have meaning. We want to be okay. That's true, of course. We all want that. So the way that that happens, however, we don't have to grasp to, or we don't have to be attached to that. We can trust that the universe is taking us on this journey of being a human, being a soul in a human lifetime. We can just trust it. We can trust that this is not our first lifetime. It won't be, it won't be our last lifetime. We can trust that we're here for our soul lessons. And with that sense of openness, expansion, relaxation, we can notice what's the most important thing that's actually happening. We can listen and look for that. Um, so you can practice this one way. So we have the new free mini course, The Magic of Blind Readings, which is on my website, sarahwiseman.com. We are registering for fall training directly with me under training at sarahwiseman.com. And um, just wanted to let you know that uh, things are going to be okay. Don't get too stressed. When you get stressed and start spiraling, relax. Trust that you're on the journey. I'm Sarah Wiseman. Uh, find me next week. And until then, you can find me at sarahwiseman.com. Thanks for listening.